from the scriptures of Psalms 102, King James, right. verses 17 through 19. When we have it, let us all say amen. Amen. Begins off to read, he will regard the proud of the destitutes and not despise their pride. This shall be written for the generation to come, and the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. For he has looked down from the height of his sanctuary, from heaven. Did the Lord behold the earth? Yeah. Yeah. To hear the groaning of the prisoner, mm -hmm. to loose those that are appointed to death. Okay. Overread, but blessed to the reading of the word. Yeah. Amen. We all can be seated. We all can be seated. I thank you, Lord, for your help. Today, I want to be transparent. Is that all right? Amen. Mm -hmm. It's all right if I expose myself a little bit. Is that okay? Uh, today, our title is Being in a Desolate and Destitute Place with God. Being in a Desolate and Destitute Place with God. I want to give some clarity on the words because this is not something that we use on the day. You know, we walk around talking about, oh, I'm so desolate. We don't walk around and say, I'm in destitute. But we see these words in the Bible and they are used. The word desolate, you see in the Bible 132 times. Mm -hmm. A brief meaning because as we can see on the screen, we have a lot of definition of what it can mean, but I'll tell you what it briefly means. It means a, a place that's deserted of people. Mm -hmm. In a state of bleak and dismissal emptiness. Mm -hmm. Feeling or showing misery. Mm -hmm. Unhappiness. Loneliness. Mm -hmm. uh, the word destitute. Which is only mentioned eight times. Mm -hmm. In fact, in Ezekiel, I believe it's chapter 15, uh, 32, verse 15. It's the only time you see the word desolate and destitute together. Mm -hmm. It lets you know that it can be one and the same, but they can mean different. So we see destitute, which is mentioned eight times, but what it says is without the basic necessity of life. Mm -hmm. Feeling devoid, bereaved, deprived, in need, empty. Drained, exhausted, depleted, sometimes condemned. My question is, have we ever felt like any of those words that were said? Mm -hmm. Have we ever been in a place that we didn't know which way was up? Today, I want to be transparent. I ask God to show me I ask God <laughs> give me a mic. <laughs> I ask God to show me how to put this together because it was really a series that he had gave me dealing with isolation and when we feel isolated. Mm -hmm. And he gave me the sermon, and, but he said, be transparent. Tell on yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't tell on nobody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. We be real. Right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so many know me as a preacher, many of you know, that have known me uh, for a long time, being in Victoria four years, I want to share with you, if that's all right. 
I was a man that when I got into corporate, I wanted the money. All right. They say planes, trains, and automobiles. Mm -hmm. I was able to be blessed with planes, not the train, but the automobiles. All right. At an early age, being able to build <coughs> houses and homes and have properties. I called myself working up the corporate ladder. And as a black man, it was hard to even become mm -hmm. a vice president or a CEO or a CEO. And God had blessed me with this. But I thought it was all me. All right. See, many of us have been raised in church, and many of us was took and taken to church by our grandmothers and by our, our family, but we knew of God. We knew of Jesus. But we really didn't know him. And so, for time, I'm sitting here thinking I'm Big Bang. Hey. I've been blessed to sit in front of three standing presidents of the United States. I'm running with sinners. I'm thinking I'm best thing since sliced bread. All right. <laughs> Having the cars that I want, the Mercedes and the Porsche and, and all these things, being able to travel and all these things as if it was me. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But then one day, one day, because I was feeling this emptiness and, and battling, and in truth, what I was battling was becoming a preacher. I gave my calling in ministry. But I wanted to do it my way. I didn't want to be up here. Matter of fact, I made excuses. I said, I, I, I can't uh, do be nobody's preaching in no pool pit. I don't even like my wife. I said, I, I can't be nobody's preacher. I like my money, my money, and my gentleman, Jack. I'm being transparent. Is that all right? Uh, uh, you, know, you, you can be in the ministry, you act like you ain't never done that to grow. You know? right. <laughs> Not me with all my money and, 
My commitment let me know that I have to be willing mm -hmm. to listen and do what was needed for change. Mm -hmm. We hear all the time the definition of insanity is to continue to do the same thing, expecting a different result. But we got a lot of same people walking around with it. You talk about the choir, but don't want to join the choir. You talk about the administration, but don't want to stand, don't want to vote, don't want to do nothing. Hmm. That's the same. I can understand obligation and accountability and responsibility. Not their fault, but my fault. Not their job, but my job. I don't have to wait on somebody to do something when I think it needs to be done. I understand sacrifice. Not only in sacrificing fleshly desires, that's easy to understand. But to understand, even if I didn't feel like doing something, and I knew that it was right, to stand up, to sacrifice for God. No matter what you've been through in your life, when you find God, 
and moving to be Christ like. Mm -hmm. Not just Christian. Mm -hmm. Not just church folk. All right. Mm -hmm. Don't know about church folk. Smile on your face, lie behind your back. <laughs> Shake your hand, put you at the same time. Yeah, church folk. Why? Because I went across too many people, even myself included, that was hurt by church folk. All right. Blaming God for what church folk do. In fact, one of the things that God changed my life was he sit there and he said, I was so busy looking at him through man's eyes and looking at man through his eyes. When I started to look at it through his eyes, man, I understood God. I understood why Jesus wept. I understood. And what it did was help me not get angry and sin. It helped me be delivered in situations and circumstances. Amen. Talking about being in a destitute, a desolate place. And so I'm here now, praying for Jesus. Ready for Jesus because of my situation and what I went through and the choice that I made. And I'm going through this divorce. I'm going through this, this issue. I'm watching this home, this house that I that I that I built at age 28, and I'm watching it now. I'm in this house three years, not paying a mortgage. Mm. Tell me where they do that. The <laughs> boy, which yeah. three years? All right. This one best thing since sliced bread. Now he can't pay his mortgage. I can't get into my accounts and my assets. I, I, I'm losing it. Matter of fact, I had to tell the judge, you know, like, like Tina Turner, Lord, just let me keep my name, y'all. <laughs> just take my everything. <laughs> but the truth, she deserved it all. Yeah. For not being the spiritual person that I should have been. Yeah. And I'm going through this. Watching the fabulous cause. The airplane. Mm. Oh, yeah, 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 watch this. Being in a destitute, a destitute place. Matter of fact, I watched God turn around, though. See, I, I thought that, you know, God was going to restore. You know how we get in those places. God's going to bless and He's going to move and He's going to heal and He's going to do. Yeah. But His ways are not my ways. And my, his thoughts are not my thoughts. He was going to take care of me. But not how I thought it was. In fact, the three years that I was there, my wife now currently had just moved here to Victoria. She had been there three years. In fact, if it wasn't for what I went through, I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. That's right. In fact, it was things, and I said, I said, Lord, well, I know I got money. You know, when you need, and all the people that you get, they gave you money to, and all those people that owe you money, they get you found, they got amnesia, or, or it's something, and it's easy for us to want to blame them, because you know, man, you don't even write this check, I need to check, but I thought I had to show me. You have to depend on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You need a breakthrough, not a bailout. Yeah, yeah. You have to break through it. Mm -hmm. How? On your knees. Mm -hmm. In meditation. Mm -hmm. huh? Praise and worship. Mm -hmm. Break through. And when I sit there and I looked at what was despair, and when I sit there and I looked at what was a problem, I watched God use me for his purpose and will. Oh, because yes, now, not only now am I pastoring coming from Port Arthur, but now I'm pastoring in Houston, and oh, I'm doing four services a week, and oh, I get this title bishop, and I'm, I'm doing these things. And I hear a voice, and I watch my circumstance. Me and my wife got married January the 1st. My house got foreclosed on January 5th. I said, oh Lord, what's he going to do? <laughs> Help me. But God knew that I would not have come to Victoria if it didn't happen that way. <laughs> All right. Tell you why I know it was God. I've been waiting on money. 
Money, money. Come in. Won't tell you the figure, but I'll tell you this. January 5th, I moved here. January 9th, I had a lot of zeros in my account. That would have took care of what I needed in Houston. But God knew that. He knew I was going to say, God, I'm gonna, can I have a weekend visit? I come, I go on weekends. <laughs> he knew that. And I was telling him he showed up later for six months, then there's some other money, when there's some zeros hit my account. God had to bring me. Sometimes we look at situations and circumstances not understanding why we're there. Instead of trusting in the Lord for it, we want to complain, we want to bag, we don't want to sit. We don't want to surrender. We don't want to listen. Mm. Now, four years later, mm. here in Victoria, mm. yeah. God blessed me. Mm. Even in the situation where I felt, because I was going through it, I'm losing my kids. God blessed me with more. Because yeah. God will bless you with more and abundantly, right? Yeah. Exceedingly and abundantly more than you can ask or think. Restoring me. Amen. 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 A wife that loves God for herself. Mm -hmm. God is restoring. But I'm not the only one that's ever been through this as a Christian. Matter of fact, the, the main one of himself, Christ himself. Had to go through something. Have to yeah. Bear with me. I know I might be putting something out of sleep, there, but I have to bear with me. I want to show you something. Mm -hmm. Is that all right? Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. When we look at Matthew 4, or we look at Luke 4, you see a story about Jesus going into the wilderness. But I want to share some detail about that story. That maybe we might have missed. I actually like the way Luke 4 really reads it and brings it. Yeah. And I'll tell you what about it for time's sake. Because we got some verses up there. But if we pay attention, what we notice is that Jesus was led in the wilderness by the Spirit. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes. Not Earl. By the Spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was laid. Why, well, in fact, one of the verses shows us that he had the Holy Ghost, right. but he was still led into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. We think and believe that we are not supposed to go through trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. When God said that we would be prosperity, he said that we go through. In fact, we see Jesus himself. Matter of fact, if I was going to teach on that, you would also see that Jesus was in the wilderness more than 40 days. Pay attention to the detail. The devil was messing with him during the 40 days, and of course, he was hungry. He was going through this, but after he hungered, after the 40 days, the devil came tempted him even more. You ain't never been there like you tired and work all that day. And it seems like at that time when somebody, I don't care if it's your kids, your sister, your cousin, your husband, what a woman get on your nerves. <laughs> but God said, man, you not live on bread alone. And now I'm going to show you a secret about something else. Is all right? When we look at it, we saw that he passed the test. Children of Israel couldn't. But Jesus did. And if Jesus did, then that means we can too. He passed the test. And he came back with power. Power. Now his power. God's power. 
He came back because he was in a place that we see in Luke 4, 13 through 4. And we see that he was in a place that the angels had to come minister to him. He was in a place. Have you ever been somewhere where you didn't know what was going to happen and you needed someone to provide you strength, courage? Matter of fact, God said in Galatians 6, the word says that those that are spiritual should carry the burdens for others. So you got to stay too long. But you can't. For strength. Mm -hmm. Preachers need strength too. Amen. Preachers need encouragement too. Mm -hmm. The things that we have to hear, the things that we have to deal with, and how we have to be, because you have to be strong. Oh, and if you make a mistake, they'll show up like so. Oh, oh, Pastor, oh, Pastor, that's it. Oh, okay, Pastor. <laughs> so we have to go into the wilderness sometimes. But when we go into a desolate and destitute place with God, you're supposed to come back with power. Yes, if they're not coming back with power, some of them questions. Well, that means that if I being taught. <clears throat> Am I other things of forgiveness and love? It should teach me knowledge. It should teach me wisdom. It should teach me so that I can increase and grow. Am I with the knowledge, learning, and understanding about myself, about my gifts, about purpose? Am I learning the wisdom on how and when to apply and when to shut up? Mm -hmm. I say all the time, teaching and talking is two different things. You teach somebody that want to hear you. But if they don't want to hear you, they just talk. That's right. 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 Wisdom to know when to apply. All right. Then, what am I understanding? Because I'm learning the wisdom 